Welcome to another episode of the Harvest Podcast, a missions podcast of Harmony Hill Baptist Church. We're in our limited series about the Niger mission trip, and this is episode four. Today, I am joined by two of the parents of the team that was a part of this trip, uh, Justin Easley and Bonnie Hicks. Thank you guys for taking time to tell your part of the story. I, I know there's a lot of people that you know, followed the story and were praying, um, and many of them, it was easy to put themselves into what they would have felt like if they were in your shoes. So I know there's a lot of people that are going to be interested about the journey of that you guys went through. So with that, uh, let's start even a little bit before the trip. Uh, Justin, I'll start with you, and, and Bonnie, I'm going to ask you the same question. When, when your child came, uh, came to you before the trip ever happened and said, um, hey, I'm interested, I want to go on this trip to Niger, um, what was your reaction to, to your daughter coming and saying that, Justin? So we knew the trip was going to be soccer and using that as ministry. Um, so we knew right away that she would be interested, and it, it wasn't, a, wasn't a shock. We were excited, of course, worried anytime they go that far, uh, anytime they leave the door, really, and mm-hmm. leave the house. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah, we, were, we were excited for her and just started getting prepared and what do we need to do to make sure she's ready to go. Yeah. Now, just as a little bit of background for people who don't know, you and your family had spent time on, on the mission field. Just, just briefly describe what you feel like you can share about that. About our time yeah. there? Okay. Yeah, we were uh, in Central Asia for about 10 years, a decade. And so uh, in that time, we've been through some, uh, I don't want to, pretty scary situations uh, that, that Jenna had already been through. Um, she had had some experience with other cultures, with flights that can be delayed, things can go wrong. Uh, so uh, she just was at least comfortable in, in that space. And um, we had seen God's faithfulness throughout our time overseas. And uh, so we, we knew she would be ready to, to do something like that. Take care, uh, have that opportunity. So, so for your family, you, know, you you guys had been on the field, but it's still you know you guys weren't going on the trip. So, oh yeah, there was still maybe some some level of as you mentioned a little bit of concern just because of the distance and where they were going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, not being able to be there with her was a big change, and just having to trust, of course, Ross and the team. Uh, we really knew she was going to be in good hands, and uh, just trusting God to yeah. have. You know, you never know when they when they leave like that. So just trusting God to be with them and trusting the leadership of the team. And, of course, Mark Phillips, uh, I had the opportunity to go to Niger, and it was December, uh, January of, two, of 2023 that we got to see them. So I had some familiarity with the, the city and the mm-hmm. compound. And so I, I knew where she would be going and the team she would be with and really yeah. trusted Mark and his crew there. Okay, so Justin had sort of a lot of background in missions, having lived overseas, and actually himself having gone to the place where the team was going and meeting some of the leadership there. Bonnie, you, that's not your background. So what was it like when, when your son came and said, uh, I really want to go on this trip to Africa? Well, having a 17-year-old son, there was no conversation <laughs> of, hey, mom, is it okay if I do this? I was more told, hey, this is what I'm going to do. So it was months before I kind of put it on the back burner. Okay, well, we'll see. You know, Mm. that's a few months from now. So it made me very nervous just because of the area and because of some of the things I had heard. I knew it was more dangerous than than other places, but not unreasonable. And um, so when it came time to paying the deposit and things got real and we did paperwork we we went ahead and went through he didn't have a passport so we started the process of doing that which was you know something good to have anyway and in the back of my mind I thought well maybe maybe it won't come in (laughs) (laughs) right yeah if I'm being honest um I I thought okay well that will be the answer Mm to this maybe he won't go but uh i was struggling with 
my fear. Mm. And I talked to a very wise friend and uh, she reminded me that it's not about me. Mm. And I had heard someone else talking about specifically about this trip. And it was so clear that everything that they said was based on fear. Mm. Everything. And it, at that moment, I said, I don't want my voice to be the voice of fear mm. for my kids. And my friend really reiterated that, that this is such an example, this is such opportunity for me to be an example of faith mm. for him. When he knows that my tendency is to worry about mm. things. So it was such a challenge to me to not make decisions out of fear and to not go to the extra effort of giving him an international plan mm. for his phone. He wasn't going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. It was, I really had to sit with it and say, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I'm afraid that we'll not know where he is and have to track him. That's the only reason. And so I said, I'm, I'm not doing it. I didn't add it. And so, you know, I've, I went through this journey before he even left. Mm -hmm. And so I was real proud of myself that I had gone through that journey. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we're never, we're never done. But it was such a good focus change for me to be reminded it's not about me. It's about the kingdom. And I can tend to look down at my little family and want to isolate and protect. And that's a place of fear. But when we're forced to look up and see, be reminded that's why we're here. That is why we were created was to glorify him and make him known. Then how could I possibly get in the way of that? Wow. And so you, you, this is all pre-trip as you described, yes. <laughs> you know, and, and so you were in, even still in the back of your mind thinking maybe the passport coming would be just either an answer of whether he should go or not. And then there was even complication with that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the actual yes. passport arriving. Getting, there was something else they had to get also. A visa. The visa. Yes. So I had sent a personal check with the visa, I didn't realize it had to be a, like a certified mm -hmm. check. I just, you know, wasn't thinking or read the fine print. So they weren't gonna take it. So thankfully Ross was sending something else. So we got it sent the next day and it all worked out. Um, so I'm glad um, it did all work out, but it was, it was definitely a, a process. So I didn't process. at one point, am I, do I have this correct, that his passport at one point said it had arrived at your house, but it had actually been delivered oh to someone Oh, my goodness. Else. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, there is another 307, the street number, yeah. the street name changes. And so right a few blocks down, there's a 307. And it was delivered to that 307. And they... You know, the delivery company was really proud of themselves. They showed me a picture yeah, of it being delivered and wrong. I said, Yeah, that's not my that's not my front porch. So I stole a package from my neighbors. <laughs> and so thankfully it, that's something that you don't want to get stolen. So yeah, exactly. thankfully yeah. it was it was safe. But yes, I had even forgotten yes, about that. And <laughs> all this drama around his passport, but it ultimately it's in hand, and then you guys are uh, right outside of the, the church office getting ready to send them off. Um, there's typically uh, everybody's weighing suitcases and then a time of prayer, and then everybody loads up and then, and then drives off. As a parent, when that caravan dro drove off to Houston, what's going through your mind at that point? Justin, what about you? Just uh, actually, uh, Teresa Stokes came at the very end of that meeting time. We prayed for them as they had loaded bags, and uh, it's just kind of it was controlled chaos. Yeah. Getting who's going to ride with who and throwing bags in the back of vehicles, 
And then uh, she had a really great word for them, just even turned back around to tell them, I can't remember exactly, you know, just knowing that God was going to go with them. Yeah. God's got a plan for you. Yeah. And uh, it was just really neat to be a part of that. And we prayed for them. And so just we had no idea what was yeah. going to happen, of course. So just excited about the experiences they were going to have and, and stories they were going to get to to tell. Just being overseas, I know how those interactions have changed my outlook and, mm -hmm. and my life. So I was just excited that they were going to come back changed. I knew they would come yeah. back changed. I didn't know exactly how much, <laughs> yeah. but what that full journey would look like. Bonnie, what about you when they, when they pulled out? Well, I had really felt called to keep my... Uh, my strong face on and to show faith in front of Ben. And when they drove off, <laughs> it was really, it was really hard. Mm. It was. So it was, an, it was an emotional mm. sort of, it was where the rubber met the road on this <laughs> faith journey you'd been on. Yes. And it was taking place. So, so early on in the trip, you know, things are obviously going well there uh, or as to plan. They're ministering, they're doing the soccer tournament, they worshiped at, you know, the Grace Gomini Church. Um, what, you know, as things are progressing this first couple of days, um, you know, were you receiving anything, either reports uh, from the team or from, from your student? What was, what was sort of your reaction and emotional journey through the first part? Was it like, oh, okay, things are going really well? You know, Justin, were you getting any feedback about those first couple of days? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I and mean, we didn't do the international plan either because uh, I'd been there, so I knew they'd probably have Wi-Fi access right. at night and at least be able to check in. And I think Jenna sent us a couple of texts just, yeah, this is what we did today. It was a great meeting the kids mm -hmm. and getting to see uh, that they got to be at the church. Yeah. So just a quick report about that. And so she was, she had a, a great time from the beginning. She's, you know, excited to be there, but really didn't talk much at all got to see a i think in the first three days i remember there was one at least one post on facebook yeah. about you know the team is here and seeing them worshiping with the church mm -hmm. was really cool so yeah we would kind of check once a day and and just make sure that we had heard from them and yeah but it wasn't wasn't a whole lot and in fairness that is a difference between a daughter on the trip and <laughs> son but had you heard anything either from either from ben or from you know, uh, others about how the trip was going? Well, my primary source of information was the parent text okay. group. Yeah. So I was very thankful for the pictures that were sent mm -hmm. and for just hearing comments that other people had heard from their kids. I didn't, I didn't hear yeah. much, but um, I was glad he, you know, he needed to be there and yeah. be present. And I, so I loved seeing the pictures once I knew they had arrived safely mm -hmm into the compound because there was a, a more of a risk to me being outside of the city. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was really relieved. Mm -hmm. I loved hearing how they were able to talk to some of the, the kids, some of the people in the community that were not Christians mm -hmm. and to get to share Christ with them. Yeah. So it was, I really, I, I felt good about it. Um, didn't hear much, but I knew from the other students and that everybody was, was doing good. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm sort of the same was getting, get hearing those uh, sort of feedback and, you know, particularly from like our staff leadership that was there, just, man, so proud of the students. And, you know, they may have, they may have taken a couple of personal L's in soccer, you know, but, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, yeah, the ministry side of it, they were really taking advantage of every opportunity. Well, of course, that that's not how the whole trip went, right? And so there's uh, about midway through, three, four days in, there's the military uh, coup that takes place. And, um, you know, Justin, you sort of wear the hat of both uh, parent and, and on staff. And so um, describe what was going through your mind when and how you heard, hey, just wanted to let you know, that there that there's been a coup in country and and sort of just describe that moment for you yeah i don't know if it's the the trauma of the moment or kind of it's a little unclear but i think i remember seeing a text i get news updates mm -hmm. and uh there was something going on in niger and i was like okay and so i went into the office i, was like, I know it ben pastor ben is in touch with the team i was like, I'll, I'll check with him he'll probably know more and he was already coming 
toward me as I came in that morning. I remember he's like, Hey, don't, don't worry. There is something going on, but you know, I'm in touch with Mark and, uh, with Ross and the team. And, you know, we're getting as, as many details as they have, yeah. we're, we're getting those, but there has been a coup. And, uh, so I just, I immediately went to kind of cultural understanding from those, uh, we went through a coup in central Asia. It wasn't near where we were, we were fine, uh, but it did affect many people in the country. And so I was kind of thinking through that lens of, okay, well, I know where they are. They should be okay where they're at because I know what Mark's telling us. So I just kind of went there immediately of what, what immediate danger are they possibly in? Yeah. What, uh, trying to stay calm. Uh, and, and cause I knew that I was well parent, but I had Kayla, my wife to think about mm -hmm. and I had uh, other parents uh, to think about as well. So I was kind of processing all of that at the same time yeah. of just, I, I really trusted Mark cause I know he has really has a hand in the community. Just, they've done so much work among the church there and just really trusting him and and say, okay, Mark and the team, what y'all tell us. And yeah. we'll, if, if we see something that seems crazy, then we're going to say something. But you know, I trust you more in that situation, getting those kids where they need to be than me telling you what to do from here. Yeah. That uh, was kind of how I try to handle it. Yeah. So for your experience, you've got a couple of things in that you've been in a country where something like that has taken place. So you've got a little bit of a thought of what that's going to look like. And Two, you've met and spent time with Mark, and so you have a little bit of a personal equity and and trusting him and knowing him. And he took care of of our team when we were there uh, on that trip. Bonnie, again, you, you you've not been through that, so so you're a parent that you've not been in a country with the coups. You no. don't have a relationship at that time with with the Phillips, and so. How, how was this news delivered to you? Sort of where were you? And then what was your reaction? And, and like Justin, it was a little bit fuzzy. I had heard something on the news. I remember I had texted Ben Stokes the night before. And it said that about the borders being closed. And so I said, hey, is that going to affect the airport of them leaving? And he was like, well, not, you know, I think so, but we're going to look into it. And I made the mistake of looking on the news and it was, it was shocking. And I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do that again mm. because it's not, it wasn't any benefit mm. to me. Uh, the word coup itself was so foreign mm. and just brings to mind you know, military and violence. Mm -hmm. And so it was very strange. It was all very, is this really happening? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? But at the moment it was still, it was still confusing. We didn't know much. And the next day my son called. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, mm. <laughs> <laughs> feels a little forced, but so he was of course very reassuring. He was he was never really, you know, he never felt unsafe. He was never really bothered. So he said, well, we've got some things going on, you know, military wise. And then the church staff and y'all did such an amazing job of keeping us updated. So it was just, you know, where do we go from here? Yeah. So there's, for you, it was both shocking and then also trying to just even understand the terms and what what is actually the implication and yes and, and I know that a lot of our parents and, and me too um, you know you talked about the news there's the sense of trying to understand what's what's real what is reality because the news is saying something the the team on the ground is saying you know we're good everything is as normal and then you know the news has a building on fire you know, or smoke and you're going okay, what's, what's reality? So, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a learning curve, et cetera. And so pretty early on, I would say within just a, a day or two, um, of this sort of coming about both, I think some parents started to, to say, Hey, let's, can we get the parents together? And the staff, uh, was, uh, I think is when they, when they officially closed the, the airport that it was sort of both sides, staff and parents was like, we, we, let's have a meeting. And so we, we scheduled that meeting. It was actually in, in this room here in our uh, high school student building. And um, so that was the first time 
that all of the families, along with uh, some of our pastoral staff and elders, just came really to pray and to answer questions. What, um, Bonnie, what do you remember from that, from that night? Um, just the going into it and even in it, like what was your just takeaway from that? Wow. The stress, the heaviness of the room was, was almost tangible. And I will never forget that. Everybody was really quiet. I remember I looked around and I saw some of the elders and that was comforting to me. It also was reminding me that, okay, this is a serious situation when we all came together and I didn't know most of the parents. Mm -hmm. And we had people, I think, that weren't even from, they weren't uh, members of our church, mm -hmm. maybe. And so it was very, it was a very diverse group. And there were very different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. They are very different. Uh, people were in just in different places in their faith. Mm -hmm. And we all react differently to stress. So it was, I was, I was very uneasy about how things were going to play out mm. and I'm sure everybody was, sure. but, but really everybody, all the parents, all the staff, it went well. We really went back to this is for the team. We want to get them home. Mm. And I think it was great. I think it was a really, it was a hard event, mm. but it was necessary because we getting all that information mm. was really what, what kept us going. Yeah. That, that was really, um, I think a point in which the communication, uh, structure became more clear like for the entire process. And then just everybody being able to lay eyes on all the people that are the most directly impacted, which was, which was the families and to be able to pray together. Um, I remember in that meeting, like you said, there's a lot of viewpoints and there was a lot of, uh, I, I was encouraged. I, I, you know, Pastor Ben led, led that meeting and I, I was sort of there just to talk to people and pray. And, um, I was really encouraged with how, how people were encouraging each other in their faith. And, um, Justin, I remember, I don't remember if it was you or your wife, but one of you, um, shared a little bit, um, about, you know, uh, your experience having gone through coup, we talked about that a moment ago, but just um, how, how it, the impact between those that are in the States and those that are on the team, what, share a little bit about what, what you were sharing and trying to communicate with the families that night. Uh, I think it was, I know, I think Kayla stood up and shared a little bit about our experience and tried to just encourage everyone. And uh, yeah, I think it was different, much different for us this time, not being there. Uh, so we had to, just trust that that God was going to be working like He had been working in, in our lives, and we were the, we were the ones there. Yeah. Uh, so that was the hardest part. But it was I think it was helpful to be all of us in the same position, just like um, that many parents all trying to get our kids to the same place and give them all the safety. Uh, I think the the tricky part at that point was we really didn't know much. Uh, flights had changed. We thought pretty early on. Well, it looks like they're going to give us this. I think it was two days later than originally scheduled. Mm -hmm. And they seemed pretty confident in that early on, but then it started changing to where we, we didn't really know much of anything yeah. when the it, borders closed. And uh, so at that point, just just encouraging them that um, there was something to be learned, mm -hmm. that even in the midst of their safety, there's still something that God's doing. Yeah. Uh, it's in those times that he is at work, as work, at work as well. Yeah. I think one of the things too, on top of that, that you guys shared that that really played out to be true, um, but I had not thought about was when you guys were over there, it was easier to be the one in the coup than it is to be the family at home, and, and I believe that was absolutely true in this trip because you know our you know our students, your kids were playing coup games, you know these little uh, minute to win it games, and they're playing volleyball and you know, board games and, you know, Bible studies. And meanwhile, back home, it's, it's just the unknown. And so there's, 
It's a really odd dichotomy that was playing. And that out. was the, when we were there, we had people calling us, like, are y'all okay? Like, oh, yeah, it's, that's happening in the big cities. Like, we're fine where we're at. And, but, but people were very worried about it because the news, of course, sure. you, you don't know what is being shown. Like, we can't even, when you're over there, you don't even see what news is being shown in the U.S. Yeah. You've got local stuff. So that was definitely, uh, that, that was a way we hoped to try to help parents was, hey, I know the news is showing this, but again, trust Mark, trust the team there. Yeah. They're going to do the best they can to keep them where they need to be. Um, well, I don't want to get ahead of anything. <laughs> well, Bonnie, uh, one, one of the things uh, from that parent, that initial parent meeting, uh, I was actually sitting at the table that you were at and, um, and you ended up sharing for the group as well, but it was something that you shared that that really um, opened my eyes as well to the the larger scope of who all is paying attention to what's going on. And it, it, if you don't mind just sharing a little bit about that first day of and what you shared about um, and the encouragement to parents to to be mindful that others are watching. That was something that was so impressed upon me is we're going through this for a reason. Um, it's not God's best, but that's, this is how the, the scripture works. He works all things to his good. And if we're going through this, we need to make the most of it. We need to, I, I just felt very impressed that pressed upon me that we needed to show our faith. This, this was such a, an opportunity to stand in faith, to be real, mm. that we're people, we are fearful, we don't know, but there are so many people watching us because we're in a spotlight that we have never been in before. Yeah. And it was a blessing mm. to see groups of people that I was told were praying for our kids mm. that would not have been praying otherwise. Yeah. And it really did open my eyes to how far this is going. Mm. And I know that God worked as much here as he did over there, mm. if not more. I, I believe there's, that. There's no question to me. So it, we wanted, or I, I truly wanted for God's glory to go as far as possible mm. in this situation because what's it for yeah what's it worth what is it worth if it's not giving him glory absolutely yeah i really appreciated you sharing that because you know in many ways my 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 focus had been you know first off okay how do we what is our plan to try to get the students home or the team home and then how do we minister to the parents and then third was okay how do we rally the church to pray and to but it was that statement that made me realize um, not only are people that know you guys going to be watching, but now this we just don't know, like you said, who's going to be watching how we as believers are going to handle a real adversity, a, a real challenge, because we're talking about kids. I mean, um, that dynamic alone, even if it was a team of adults, it would have gotten some spotlight, but because it's teenagers— it's just a broader scope um, for all, you know, the schools that they're in. And it, it's just, it just is. So I really appreciated you sharing that. Um, as we, as we, as we sort of move forward in the story, um, you know, we, we started having some prayer meetings, you know, uh, uh, Sunday, uh, starting on that Sunday evening and uh, with the church praying together. And, and like you mentioned, Justin, there was an initial plan a secondary plan, a third plan. I mean, it was just it was just holding everything loosely. And then, and then there was really just a statement that um, it's, it's closed. And they had set, the, the, the new regime had set sort of a day, but it was pretty far into the future. And um, so as we're going through this phase where we're really, we, we, we really just feel like um, we can't do anything to get them home, at least for a number of days. That's a t that was a tough stretch um, of just every day going, 
uh, almost like a prison, you know, like just marking the day <laughs> towards. Um, what were some things, you know, as you were going through that uh, as families, um, as individuals, what were some things that people um, were doing that encouraged you in, in a real low, uh, challenging spot? Any, anything come to mind where people just were ministering to you in a way during that time that just meant meant a lot and helped you get through? I think just uh, like Bonnie mentioned it a little bit, but just the awareness. It wasn't just our church. Yeah, It was across the board. And, and if they didn't know that we had a daughter, then they wouldn't know to ask or say anything. But I was amazed the number of people said, hey, we're praying for you. And just that just that statement alone. That, yeah. Hey, I know, I know you mean that. Um, so, and of course, we were praying as a family. Just, I think it really uh, helped our younger kids to just be together and just pray and, and trust and uh, just, yeah, just help them to know mom and dad are praying for this. Mom and dad aren't panicked like crazy, so maybe we can trust that she's going to be okay too. And um, so, and I think the prayer evenings, just seeing our church family come together and people that I knew had no connection, no family or blood connection to anyone over in Niger, but they were there every time. I can think of several families that were there, at every single one, and even from other uh, churches. And so it was just it was really encouraging to know it's, um, you know, we want to be that unified all the time, but there are events like that that, that bring us together and remind us the unity in Christ. So, Bonnie, you don't have to have anything you would add about just how people were ministering to you. People saying that they were praying for us. You know, people that I I don't talk to on a daily basis. I had a, a friend message me and said, hey, can I bring you coffee? Mm. I haven't talked to her and I can't tell you how long. Mm. But that was another reminder of that people are watching, but just sending a text, mm. just saying, hey, what do you need? During that time, it it really means a lot to know that people are thinking about you and that you're you're not alone. Yeah. So as we go through that that week, there's a couple of things that happen over there in this year. Um, you know, there when we find out borders are closed, as I mentioned, and may not open until you know it's like a week later. Um, and even that, you just don't know if that's going to be a, a real deadline. You have the day where. There was a, a, a protest outside of the French embassy, which sort of began um, what I would consider to be a, a, what felt like an escalation um, off the normal playbook for that region. Um, you know, you've got, um, th then you have um, just people um, in the news talking about Nigeria and others, and, you know, even our government starting to comment about the situation over there. So. All those things are happening. Was there a particular moment in this entire journey, one I've mentioned or, or another one even, um, where you felt the lowest, like where you felt like that, like it just, that was the moment that really had you at uh, the emotional bottom? May not be, but just anything come to mind? I think just the each day at that point, we kind of thought there would be, okay, eventually there's gonna be like this aha moment or a culmination and I didn't and I in no way thought there'd be an evacuation like that um but I was like okay we got to get this is going to be good news here one day and I, I trusted that they were going to still get to do some great things I was really worried the day uh that uh, it was the same day that the uh protest happened that they went to the church to the little church building there and I again I trusted that that they knew because there are, you know, there's streets that you can go another way and not be near where that area was. Uh, but it was still, uh, pretty, pretty nerve wracking. And yeah. I was glad to hear that they made it back to the compound yeah. later that day. And of course we didn't have all that news in real time, but uh, I was glad to learn that they made it back fine. And, um, but yeah, that was just as the days kept going, it was like, okay, I, I know God's got a plan. Yeah. But, but it was, so it was the accumulation of days where nothing seemed to be moving that, yeah. The more that it went on, it just felt like it just kept weighing on you. Yeah, I think especially the, the borders closing yeah. and not having a real clear picture of when flights would even be able to be scheduled. Yeah. Or, 
Yeah, it's kind of my love. Yeah, money. Anything different for you, or does that sum up your experience? It really does. It was there was a weariness mm. of it. There was a an uneasiness, and there was a day that my fifteen year old son and I I'll never forget standing at the island, and he said, "Mom." Even if he doesn't come back, it's okay. Mm. Wow. And I had earlier read uh, Philippians 1, 20 through 25. And, you know, Paul talks about how to die mm. is gain. Well, because he's going to be with Christ, right. but because of the way that he went. And to have to look at... If my child doesn't come back, mm. there was such a peace mm. in knowing that he was there to glorify the Lord. There was almost a sense of pride of that it wasn't for nothing. Mm. But we got to the point where we really looked at that mm. in the face. Oh, I always thought that they would come home in my heart. We just didn't know when. We didn't know how it was going to happen. But I'll never forget looking at my son over the island, my son that was still home, and him saying, Mom, it's it's okay. Wow. We'll see him again. Mm. It just, again, lifts your head to the eternal perspective of mm. God's kingdom perspective of that's why we're here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> But that's a reality. I mean, like you said, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, a general sense of they're going to come home, but you had to wrestle with that, uh, the 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 possibility, and that's wow. That that's an intense tense thing, and I, that's what I kept thinking. Uh, even now, is just I'm so thankful that God was gracious in His response to bring every member of the team home because that that doesn't always it's not always the outcome, but he was gracious in that here. Um, so there was this sort of marching on of days with really no news. And yet there's this artificial deadline of when they're saying it might open and we're getting a little bit closer, but not hearing anything to say that there are plans for that to still be the case. So it's, it's just marching on. But then there is a day where we get a, <laughs> get a, uh, a phone call and, um, that the that there is a plan and they are getting out and they're getting out now. Like it's happening <laughs> right now. Um, and it was not on a day that we expected. I mean, it, it really um, came out of the blue, if you will. Justin, where were you um, when you got that news? And what was, how did you respond to that? Oh man, again, the, <laughs> the details. I was in the office because uh, I know the, someone with the State Department started emailing mm. and calling, and then uh, y'all ran on those conversations. Um, so I, I kind of, I was, I didn't believe it mm. at first. I was like, they're going to do what? <laughs> and, uh, of course, we didn't know the exact details, but we knew that they were working on something. Yeah. And uh, so I was just, I was in shock. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't believe it was coming to that. Uh, it's like that. That seems a little bold, but yeah. Since we can't make real plans, we had me had talked to. I know Ben had talked to uh, a travel agent who really helped us out, mm -hmm. um, and I know that they had some possible flights, but even those didn't seem very yeah. realistic. And then this kind of happened right on top of that, and so I was like, "Well, man, if this if this happens before those flights were supposed to, anyways, then that's that's a good deal." Mm -hmm. So then it was just kind of, "How are these details going to even?" come to place like how are they going to get them from yeah the compound to the airport and mm -hmm. so but I, I was i was in shock i was like wow this is crazy that's coming to this yeah so that so for you there was even a little bit of skepticism of not wanting maybe to allow yourself to hope that this really was the answer till there was more information that's indicating no this is really happening okay bonnie what about you where were you how did you how did you get this news Surprisingly, it's very fuzzy to me. I don't have, I think I was at work, got a text message and I was 
very much the same way of, I, I was just really in disbelief. It was out of nowhere. Yeah. Because we'd been told, okay, maybe this stay for a flight, maybe this, and then there was nothing. And then all of a sudden, wait, they're, they're, it's now. Like <laughs> they're, I, I think maybe my information was a little delayed. And I think, well, okay, they're, wow, they're on their way. And then there was the, a little bit of the fear of the sense of leaving the safety of the compound and going to the airport and how is this going to work out? And just the amazement of knowing that our government, our officials worked with other governments in other countries. And it was, wow, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Really. So we get that information pretty early in the morning and it's a, I mean, it was madhouse in the office of, I mean, things were happening so fast until they weren't like it was, you know, Ross is calling, you know, for like 10 seconds, like we're loading up right now. We'll touch, but it's like, Oh, we'll send out, you know, and you know, Ben's going, it's going to take a long time to call these parents. I was like, just send a group chat right now because we got to get this out. And you know, there was just all, but then it felt like they were about to be ushered straight onto a plane and out. But then it, it ended up being a long day of them going to one base and getting cleared and then going to the airport and getting cleared. And at what point, at what point for you did relief set in? Like the, the sense of their coming home, was it, obviously it wasn't when you first heard the news because both of you had a sense of disbelief because you plans had fallen through before in this, in this journey. You know, was it, when you heard wheels were up, was it when they, you saw pictures of them in Rome or was it even when you laid your hands on them at the airport or sometime later, when did the sense of relief wash over you, Justin? Yeah, well, and to get to that point, um, we didn't give Jenna an international plan, mm -hmm. but then Kayla actually said as it approached, I don't remember when, it was before the news came, but it was in that process of, hey, I really think, you know, she needs to be able to contact us well, the internet went down at the compound. Yeah, they added that it was Wi-Fi for a while. Yeah, for about 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, that was what sparked that. So, yeah, let's, all right, let's go ahead. And so, in that time, text started coming in more quickly. And I think either Ross or Mark sent one that, oh, it's it's not going to be like we thought. It's like, they're coming now. Mm -hmm. And so, and Jenna, we were trying to text Jenna. And uh, that was the most anxious time for me was, I, I didn't think they were targeted, nothing anyone sure. was telling us sounded like that that it was just kind of the result of what was going on in the country but i knew if 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 they were targeted as foreigners it was going to be on the road yeah so f life 360 and i was actually able to track her dot <laughs> wow. on on uh, on their trip and they stopped i was like well wait a minute that's not the airport what are we doing and i was actually able to text jenna and uh she said i don't know we're, they're checking our bags or something they're going to get us on another bus I think Ross or someone sent one out too at that time, but anyways, it was just just back and forth, and that was that was the most anxious time uh, for me. We actually had a party uh, for my youngest uh, birthday party, and I pulled Kayla aside and said, "Hey, there's plans to get them out, but I couldn't give her the details at that point." Yeah. So it was just just I just remember that being the most anxious time of they just if they can just get to that airport, yeah, then I know they're they're safe. So for, so then when did it really wash? Well, the airport, then they started checking their bags and doing a health check. Yeah. And it was like, man, why are y'all not in the air? And we were waiting for yes. a, a message or a call from yeah. someone at the State Department. That, yeah, they are wheels up. And uh, for me, it was once they were in the air. Yeah. I, was, I didn't think there was going to be a, a rocket-fired missile sure. or anything, a shoulder-fired missile or anything like that. I, I, I knew if they got on the plane and off, I was, yeah. that, for me, that was... That was so good. They're on the way. Of course, then air travel, you're hoping they land yeah, safely. Yeah. All that. Different set of concerns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But once they lifted, lifted off and okay. had that news, I said, okay, I think, we're, I think we're getting there. All right. Bonnie, what about you? When, when did a moment wash over you of this is coming to a conclusion? When I saw him. <laughs> when I hugged him. Yeah. Um, I, I also added the international plan after the wi-fi had gone down and so i was watching on live 360 and for some reason for it was over an hour that it showed him still at the compound 
Hmm. And they were in the air already on the flight. And so I thought, okay, I think somebody would have realized by now if they didn't have been with them. I'm pretty sure, well, come to find out, because they left in a hurry, his phone was dead. Oh, so it's so known. I kept I kept trying to refresh, and so that can be a, a, a relief to know that. And then if it's not working, it's not working correctly, correctly. Um, because of a technical difficulty, it adds oh, to the stress. So his phone was dead, so I got no, I had, didn't know. Oh, man. I just was relying on the other text. But really, for me, when they got off the, the airplane and we saw him in Houston, was, and he was in the truck, and we were headed home, yeah. was really a sense of relief. Wow. I think we were all, there was a parent chat going. Mm. And I remember, I think I remember yours saying, I, I think he's, his show's there as anyone else's. <laughs> so we were just trying to... Say no, I'm pretty sure they're they're all together. They're so ask your kid if Ben is there. <laughs> yeah, I need proof of their life yes. with the group. The picture's good. Oh man. Yeah, that's so interesting. I, like for me, uh again, my experience is way different, you know, as, as parents. But uh when when we got the news and that they were going to be on that flight with the Italian um military uh that they were gonna be getting out. That was the moment that it, it was like, I just knew that moment. It, this is God, you've been gracious. And I remember after we got all the details, um, in, in that crazy room and all the, you know, the, the diplomats in Rome and all this kind of stuff sort of settled in. I just remember going into my office, into the back room and just weeping with joy and just thanking God. That was really the moment for me where it was just like, God, you did it. And you did it in a way that none of us could have scripted or planned or even thought. And on this day that, no, you know, we still thought we had a number of days to go. And that was so, in such an intense ordeal. And, um, yeah. So you get them home. Um, the U S state department, I think it even said, we're not, we're not worried about Americans yet. We think we're good enough that, yeah and so that was really a shock when it was the like you're italians or yeah you're what <laughs> yeah I, right i, I will <laughs> never be surprised. able to be convinced that the way that god did that was um for any other reason than to just show that it was him working it out um you know if it had been tickets that we had purchased for you know the four or five days later you know it's still a success it's still thankful but the way that he did i just felt like he answered and encouraged the prayer um and to your point because people were watching it was it was a way to be able to say only god did this now certainly our our civil servants did played a role but but our belief is that god moves <laughs> moves our civil servants and the hearts of yes. of those and so so we get them home and because of the way that they left there's just one sort of uh slightly humorous a little bit sad i guess uh, depending on your viewpoint but you know your your son's suitcase um and, and really all of their suitcases did not make it back uh at the same time describe describe uh ben's particular dilemma with the suitcase and uh and the the state in which you did finally receive it yes that was that was very interesting he Apparently, it was such a surprise to them, and they had such short notice that they were leaving. Uh, my son had waited to do his laundry. At that moment, they were in the soaking cycle of the washing machine. All the clothes. Yeah. Uh. A couple of other of the boys, uh, one of the other boys had some things in there as well. So it was like, get your stuff we're leaving and so he tells me about him literally fishing the clothes out of the water and putting it in his suitcase and i'm you know i have all so many questions at that <laughs> at that point but your sweet daughter offered to, to carry some. put some of his wet clothes in her suitcase <laughs> which wow I didn't, I didn't care. Right. 
I could care less. If yeah. we never saw it again, we had brand new you know, running shoes and some things, but I, I, I don't care. Yeah. My son's home, and I, I really didn't think much about it. Like, oh, we're going to get it back. Because he had bought a few things that he, you know, was souvenirs. Right. And when y'all called and said, hey, his suitcase is at the church and his backpack. Like, okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll go, I'll go pick it up. And I, I noticed all the church staff was really, it's, everybody was kind of around, you know, like, well, okay. And just looking at it. I don't know how they didn't throw it away because I'm pretty sure it was still dripping liquid, but it had been weeks. weeks. Yes. So I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll wait for Ben. He'll, you know, want to look at it. Cause they had talked about how gross it was going to be. And, and the church were like, we're opening it now. We're, <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> so we did. And it was, it was like some sort of science experiment. No. I didn't know that mold grew in every color of the rainbow. Oh, well, on everything. <laughs> everything, yes. It doesn't come out of, you know, leather. And he had his brand new running shoes. The sole had separated oh, from wow. the rest of the shoe. He had his journal that... He takes with him to church. He had all his notes, and it was pretty much ruined, and I hated that for him. Um, I, it was, I have yet to find a spiritual significance in the suitcases <laughs> sure. other than, uh, you know, as a mom being like, let's let's maybe do laundry a little more often, <laughs> you know, since we're going to be, you know, leaving for college. And, but it was... It, it was just, it was comical. Yes. It, it really was. It was unexpected. And again, it just made it so clear that I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if anything, just close. <laughs> it was, uh, one, it's a time capsule of how quickly they actually did have to leave. I think it was within a 15 minute window. And then, and then two, just the, maybe a picture if we had to press it of, you know, what, what really matters in life, you know, this suitcase is spoiled <laughs> and who cares because yeah. you know, what really matters. And if you if you have to leave quickly and your friend has wet clothes, don't take them. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> say, just sorry. Say you know what? Let's what sacrifice. <laughs> have them nail it later. I mean, the, the Phillips weren't leaving yet, yeah. you know, but, but I did, I did appreciate the Phillips mm. so much. And I, I loved getting to meet them later mm. to get eyes on them and to hear their perspective. But they could have sent their kids on that flight. Mm -hmm. He could have sent his wife to safety back to the U.S. And they didn't. Mm. You know, they had a choice of, I mean, they could have said, You're, look, these are kids, we're going to, give up you know can you give up these seats for our kids safety but they didn't and that i was thankful for that i was thankful for how they showed their faith mm -hmm. and i loved hearing about how the team in the extra time spent time in the word mm -hmm. and god really i know he used he used that extra time it wasn't wasted no as we wrap up, again, I just want to say thank you for sharing in such a, a vulnerable and real way, just because I know people wondered, um, what would it be like to be a parent you know, in this case? So as, as sort of a final question, what, um, I'll start with you, Justin, Bonnie, I'll ask you the same question. What, if anything, has this, looking back on it, you know, it's about six months, there's still processing that takes place, even even that far out, but when you look back, what what do you feel like God taught you or your family or encouraged you or just about missions or something else? Like, what what are you beginning to see as the as as a fruit of your experience with this uh, with this trip? Yeah, I think um, there's there's always risk involved in ministry, mm. uh, local ministry. It's uh, maybe more emotional. What if they don't? 
receive what I'm sharing or uh, what if relationships break down because they don't believe what I believe or uh, we kind of think more of physical risk because you're going so far away uh, but it's all all the risk is ultimately worth it I mean it's kind of maybe I don't know, feel like we're taking advantage of that maybe because we have the rest of the story mm. we were you know it was it was hard and there was anxiety but God worked in an amazing way and and great ministry was done too so it's it's maybe easy to say, well, yeah, sure, the risk is worth it. You you made it unharmed, right? But um, it's still it's still worth it, mm. uh, even if if it hadn't ended that way. There are many other stories of other groups that mm. unfortunately didn't end like ours did. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't change God's mission mm. and His plan for His people. That that's we have to be willing. I didn't think it was risky going. Mm. Um, I, I had been there, mm-hmm. and I thought, what could happen? I mean, coups do happen around the world, and more often in, in Africa, it seems, but it's like, that's not going to happen while they're there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just thankfully, God allowed our group to come back together and uh, make it back to us. But I, th- I think it doesn't deter the mission. Mm. Yeah. Bonnie, what about you? What What is, as you're processing this, that, that God uh, sort of taught you? Definitely a, a change in focus, a change of perspective of what is important. And I had a few people express to me and even to my my other son that, well, I hope you don't do something stupid like that again. Mm-hmm. How could you let your kid go to Africa. What in the world? Mm. And at first it, it made me feel like a bad parent. It put shame on me like, oh my gosh. And then I went back to such a feeling of gratefulness and thankfulness that I have a teenager that wants to spend their summer Mm. going and ministering to people who don't know the Lord. There's nothing better than that. Mm. That's as good as it gets for us as a parent. Mm. And I was so thankful for that. And I try to remind my boys, if the world thinks you're an idiot, you're doing something right. Because we're supposed to be strangers and aliens in this world. So I tried to use it and say to, to remind the people that told me that was, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that he wanted to do that. And what, What is more important than sharing the love and the hope of Jesus Christ? So having God use that journey and use the testimony that all of us went through is is important because we went through it for a reason and we want him to be glorified no matter what. Amen. Well said. Again, thank you both uh, for joining me. This is, I've enjoyed this so much. Thank you for watching this episode of the Harvest Podcast, a uh, missions podcast of Harmony Hill Baptist Church. If you would, please like, share, subscribe, all those kind of things. Help us beat the algorithm so as many people as possible can hear uh, and give glory to God for what he did with our Nazir team. And I look forward to seeing you the next time you're on the Hill.